We offer technical skill building, professional resources, communities, and support so that members can keep bringing diverse perspectives to tech and level up in their careers. The Barcelona Network is one of the communities in a global network that is happy to have you. Our mission is to empower diverse women to excel in technology careers and anyone is welcome, code or no code. Our vision is to catalyze a tech industry where diverse women and historically excluded people thrive at every level, irrespective of race, creed, or sexual orientation. Our values is right before are right before you on the screen. We like to focus on our mission. We like to advocate for change. We like to design for inclusion. And we like to journey forward. In just 12 years, we have grown to serve members in 147 countries globally. We started in 2011 as a small community group in San Francisco. Quickly, women around the world wanted to be part of the community. Today, we are a global footprint of over 343,000 strong and growing. We have about 80 cities that have started a WW Code community, and we also have our track communities, which are online and virtual. We are an inclusive community. We do not tolerate harassment in any form. If you observe anything unusual, please feel free to submit an incident form through contact at womenwhocode.com. Now to our amazing speakers. The organization first, Maria, Malcolm and Jacqueline are three former big corporate colleagues reunited on a mission to foster an inclusive, innovative, and transparent AI landscape through the empowerment of women at Diversify. Malcolm is a consultant and he's a co-founder of Coating AI. Malcolm is the guy in the middle. He is a pioneering force in the realm of generative AI with a strong acumen in change management across various industries, including oil and gas. His expertise spans across Europe and Africa where he has transformed businesses, deploying innovative AI solutions. Malcolm's leadership style rooted in empathy and agile methods have seen him direct global strategic projects and lead diverse teams of highly skilled professionals in the energy sector. As a seasoned keynote speaker, he enlightens audiences on the game-changing potential of generative AI. His journey symbolizes the power of innovation, collaboration, and transformative potential of AI in the business landscape. Malcolm will be joining us later. Then we have Jacqueline. Jacqueline is originally a petroleum engineer from Vienna, Austria. She transitioned into the field of data science and informatics, overcoming the challenges that came with such a dramatic career change. In addition to her role as a data scientist, she strongly advocates for women in STEM, volunteering for organizations that encourage female involvement in these fields and acting as a mentor. Jacqueline also conducts I Am Remarkable workshops aimed at promoting self-confidence and motivation among women and underrepresented groups. Her journey symbolizes breaking stereotypes, advocating for diversity and empowering women in tech through 
the power of community and collaboration. And then we have Maria who holds a PhD in mathematics. Maria has dedicated her career to talent development spanning across Russia, Europe, and Africa. Transitioning from data acquisition and analytics to capital intensive operations, and then to talent management in a leading oil and gas service company, Maria has played a pivotal role in global HR transformation. Maria explores the intersection of technology, yoga, and meditation to unlock superpowers that will stay relevant in the AI era. Her story embodies the power of harnessing individual talents for common success. So over to the Diversify team to take it away. They will tell us about Diversify and dive right in to generative AI for women examples for business, family, and free time. Once again, I warmly welcome you. And can we welcome the Diversify team with a virtual applause? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Idri. Let me take uh, control over the screen and um, let's start. Ooh, such a powerful introduction. <laughs> My heart is beating. So hello, everybody. And uh, we will start straight away. And we hope to be useful for your professional and private life, giving you amazing examples of using uh, generative AI. So we are not only going to focus today on applications for business, whereby this is very important. We're also going to cover quite a few cases of uh, usage, uh, generative AI for private life, for your, for your life with kids, for your vacations planning, and so on and so forth. So let's start. So uh, this is a small agenda we are going to go through. So let us uh, do a small introduction and then uh, Jacqueline will tell us a bit about generative AI and uh, its foundations. And then, as I said, we are going to cover lots of cases and obviously have a Q&A session. But uh, what I would like to say, please uh, feel free to interrupt us at any point where you have a question, where you don't, where you have some doubts or you have some comments. Uh, please feel free. We want to have a free conversation and we want to hear your opinions about everything we say. So, uh, even though AJ gave us such an incredible introduction and <laughs> you cannot <laughs> wish for, for more, we still felt with Jacqueline that we would like to say about our motivation in doing such a workshop. So maybe even our dreams or our hopes about uh, usage of generative AI. So me, for me, Probably the, if I would say, would have to name the biggest motivation that I have in life, it's a personal development. And it's for myself and for other people around. So going through my career from doing science and engineering, I still found out at the end that the thing I enjoy the most is seeing people growing and developing. And I, I see the huge potential uh, which brings uh, generative AI for this purpose. And probably I will, I will say more about that later on in the presentation. The second, uh, the second point which excites me a lot is thinking about that generative AI can revolutionize the way people work. And uh, 
the the possibilities that each individual would have professionally and no possibilities which uh, uh, people who are going through the big transitions in life would have using uh, generative AI. And the third point, which, which I like a lot about it, is that I believe that generative AI could help us to, to achieve sustainable development goals. And uh, there are a lot of them which, uh, which are, can already be addressed right now using uh, generative AI. So uh, then I quickly introduce my husband, Malcolm, who is going to join us slightly later. Unfortunately, he had to fly right now. So uh, basically, this presentation or this course, this initiative is uh, his baby. <laughs> so of course, each of us contributing, but uh, Malcolm is a huge enthusiast of generative AI. So he, he prepares and does workshops for the companies showing how generative AI can be used for their, uh, for their needs. Uh, he shows them how they can achieve efficiency gains and empowering teams with generative AI. So then, uh, Jacqueline, now is yes, your turn. So also, welcome, a very warm welcome from my side. EJ, I also found this, this introduction was amazing, really, like a, <laughs> a great introduction. And I see from the participants a lot of names that I know from, from LinkedIn. So I'm super happy that you, you followed this invitation. And, and I'm very happy to have all the new faces and the faces I already know here. So I originally grew up in, in Vienna in, uh, in a family where my dad was a plumber and my mom works at the cashier. So nobody had a high school education there. And it was always my goal to see where I can get, how far I can get really to reach for the stars. And when I was fighting with my mom about, I don't want to clean up my room. I always said, when I'm grown up, I have a house and a cleaning lady. I don't have to worry about this at all. And that was kind of always the motivation that was dragging me along further on to university, um, getting my master's degree in 2009 in petroleum engineering. So um, by that time, I already got to know my husband by now. And we always agreed to fully support each other because I was uh, traveling a lot uh, in this company. I was really able to go to the Emirates, to Siberia. I was working in different countries across Europe. And it would be a phone call saying, OK, tomorrow there is a flight booked for you to go there. Off you go. So it was really a life full of action. And I totally enjoyed it. And I, I really thought I'm, I'm having a career. And at some point, Coming closer to year 30, I decided I, I would like to have a family. Um, and then 2015, my son was born and suddenly my life was completely out of control. So my old life didn't fit anymore. Um, the expectations um, I had because my priorities simply changed. As a mother, it's not only the job and the career you care about. Suddenly you have to split your priorities. And to be honest, it was impossible for me to do that. And at some point I really had to do something different. And that is when I met Malcolm. He already joined this company, the same company as my trainee. And I would meet him years later after maternity leave to give me one of the most important advices I have heard, which was, why are you wasting your potential here? You're working in this hamster wheel, go out, do something else. And that was basically the whole start for my career change. And Malcolm at the end left the company before I did. And I decided to do uh, an informatics bachelor degree to really get a good solid start into this new industry. So I got this call from Malcolm a um, couple of months ago when he said, Jacqueline, did you see all this news about generative AI, chat GPT? I don't know how, I'm, I'm so worried that my daughters, where, where will they have a place in this world with all this technology popping up that is by default 
not literally designed to be um, attractive to women. And that's how the entire thing started. And then we brainstormed and we decided that the three of us could do the workshops. And today, here we go. And you are one of our um, attendees of this workshop. Maria, please. Thank you. So we will start with the very first uh, interaction with you because we are interested to understand your backgrounds. We would like to know what exposure you have so far with uh, ChatGPT. So if you scan, if you scan this QR code and everything works, <laughs> then you should have the option you either select that you never used it until today, that you used it once. Okay, I can see people answering. So if you can please, I will now show you in a second. I will just take over the sh sharing for a moment. So you can see what I see, which is the answers of you. Um, so we have people used it a few times or using it on a regular basis, which is good. So replies are popping in. Pretty often it happens that people are using it once and then they are disappointed and not don't use it anymore. So, yep, <laughs> just as I mentioned it, it's popping up. But what we can see from a couple of responses is that we have an audience that is using it apparently on a regular basis. Hope everybody scanned the code. Okay, cool. That's good. So we have a mature, um, if you can go back to sharing, um, Maria, I just stopped. So we have a pretty mature audience here when it comes to ChatGPT. That's good. So on the next slide, I, I'm having, um, a little bit of a riddle for you, if you can go, yeah. There is a number, 37%. And I would like you to think and interact with us and tell us what do you think could be a reasonable number just from your imagination when it comes to ChatGPT? Um, what is your first intention when you hear this number? What could you think of? You can post it in the chat or as you like, everything is... Um, possible for you to intervene there is that no is... right or wrong <laughs> just, just, just give it a while the same. <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly okay we have one answer uses it daily aj what is your thoughts what pops up to your mind when you see 37 percent only 37 percent of women probably uh -huh, okay. All right. Never heard of it. Okay, let let me solve the riddle then. Um on, okay. the next, <laughs> <laughs> on the next slide we see that there was actually a study uh from the MIT and they took two groups um to work on projects where one was allowed or encouraged actually to use ChatGPT while the other was not. And the 37% is the increase in productivity to have. So, so you need to think about this because it's not only the productivity, so the quantity, but also the quality improved by 20%. And this tells us that if you, if you do the work usually in five days, you can complete it in three. So it is a real time saver. <clears throat> but when we talk about at GPT, if you go to the next slide, Maria, please. Um, there is just tons of applications where you could use it. So as you see in this workshop, we are going to discuss business use cases, but also family and free time. And probably you have heard more about the business use cases from online, but you can do a SWOT analysis. Uh, you can set up entire campaigns, marketing campaigns. You can read in contracts from your insurances or um applications you can do so many things and optimize these things to make your time used more productive and focus simply on other things maria so as we talked about chat gpt so far it is 
there is more out there than ChatGPT, but that is simply the technology that we were confronted the most because when OpenAI decided to launch it, um, literally the CEO said, we made them dance. And that is because Google <laughs> was really put under pressure um, by this product from the company OpenAI to also react and publish something. But with every technology, there's also coming some limitations. It cannot do everything. So first of all, what is important to understand is that this model is trained on some text that has been cut at one particular day. So if you ask him a question about anything that happened after this particular day, it wouldn't know the answer because in this universe, it simply didn't exist. That is one thing. Also, if you ask it a question, the more simple the question, the more simple the answer. So it oversimplifies. So how you ask answers is really important here. Marsha is later going to talk about the topic of prompting with you. Secondly, there is something called a bias. So sometimes people think when they ask ChatGPT, what they get back is um, the truth as such. But at the end, it can only give you back what it was trained on. And as our society is naturally biased, what you will get back is a biased answer. So you always have to keep that in the back of your head. Then there is something called hallucinations. So that means if you are asking ChatGPT, for example, um, Graz is the capital of Austria, uh, and it says no, but you keep telling him, yes, it is. At some point, it will, it will really say yes. Or if you keep asking him the same questions, it will start to apologize and do crazy stuff, which we don't want. This comes from the fact that there is no truth. What it does, it collects just most probable answers from its database and returns some of these answers. And it doesn't re return always the same stuff. It, wants, it was designed to answer differently. And lastly, there is some constraint with the memory. So if you start to engage with ChatGPT and you have 10, 20 prompts, at some point it will forget what you have told it in the first place and you need to remind it. Next one, please, Maria. So we talked about bias and I'm pretty sure everybody has some idea about bias, but we found one pretty interesting example with a, a, with a technology that is generating images. And to the left, you see three ladies that were putting in their job descriptions and were asking to create an image out of that. And what happened? Mid Journey was drawing classical white men. So this is the bias we see from the past, we learn from the past, and this technology thinks that this is the norm, which apparently it is not, but this is the bias that we have to be aware of. Maria? Thank you, Jacqueline. And as you mentioned before, let's uh, talk now about prompting and the importance of prompting, because it is the large language model because it predicts the next word in a sequence of words. The prompting is really, really important. And uh, you always, when you ask ChatGPT or other AI, you need to provide context, a lot of context. The more context, the better. So therefore, uh, for example, uh, it's very, very be beneficial to always speak to ChatGPT. You can, you can enable the voice entry on your PC or you can voice entry on your phone and you give a lot of context. For example, uh, you want to provide some answer for your five-year-old daughter or you want to provide some answers for your business. So you, you speak a lot. You, you say, this is, the, this is the situation, this is the issue, that's what we want to do, and you provide lots of text. And uh, here is, for example, one of the examples that Malcolm did in his startup. I'm just going to start it without... Uh... Okay, one second. 
So here's the strategy workshop and this at the startup of Malcolm. And that's how they did it together with the marketing uh, team. They just were speaking to chat GPT together, two people providing the input here. He, he highlighted the input from Malcolm, input from AO, and they asked chat GPT to, to ask uh, questions back to guide them through the strategy workshop. And they were able to come up with the results within one hour, which would previously probably take like a day or maybe even more. So this is uh, the example highlighting the importance of providing context. So, and this is, uh, this is basically the, the thread of that strategic workshop. So first they trained a little bit chat GPT, what to do and what to expect and how to interact with them. And what we say that uh, most, lots of the times people do one request to chat GPT, they receive all the simplified answer and they say, okay, generative AI doesn't work. But in fact, First of all, you need to provide a lot of context. And second of all, you need to, you need to do iterations. If you don't like an answer, you, you once again say what you don't like and how you want it to be corrected and so on and so forth. So therefore you can get very impressive results. So the second thing which we want to speak about is uh, debate AI. Uh, Malcolm's sister, she wanted to create a video for Kickstarter campaign because they want to publish a wonderful book for children about dig digital world and digital twins. And it's a very, very interesting project. So in order to create the footage for this video, we used uh, debate AI. So basically, I will show it a little bit later through the prompting. You can tell uh, ChatGPT, okay, now you are the mediator of the debate between a certain personas. And uh, then uh, you tell them which footage you have for creating these videos. Like, for example, in this case, we had some drawing videos, we had some videos in the park, we had the videos, uh, two co-founders talking in the office environment and so on and so forth. So, and, and using uh, chat GPT and its debating possibilities, uh, we could create an amazing video. So basically, uh, basically uh, at the end of the prompt, we received exact way to cut videos in order to put them together and for creating video for a Kickstarter campaign. So let me show you now the, the prompt. One second. So this is a chat GPT. So, and it starts this way. Imagine that you wanted to create a guerrilla marketing video for a Kickstarter campaign and, and that the footage that you had cannot change, which means you have pre-recorded. So basically, as, as I said in, on the previous slide, you provide lots of context. And then you create, uh, in this case, four personas, the expert, outsider, super fan, skeptic, and you make them debate in order to, to find out in which sequence you want to put those videos. So it's actually very, very amazing because uh, whoever tried to make a nice video using lots of inputs, lots of footage, knows how difficult it can be. But at the end, those characters mediated by ChatGPT itself came, out, came up with this uh, table which says exactly uh, what to do. So, and that's, uh, I will just show quickly the video that came out.
So we have this wonderful video created by by us, but using the input from from the debate AI. So it turned out very, very well. So then we are going to probably enjoy very successful Kickstarter campaign. So then let's go to the next example. So the next example, which we would like to show you is uh, using a digital twin. <laughs> so for example, in the startup of, of Malcolm, each co-founder has a digital twin. I'll show you a bit later how to create digital twin. So if, for example, one of the co-founders wants to ask another one some question at four in the morning, he can totally do that because the digital twin fed with some, uh, let me maybe show you straight away how it's created. For creating a digital twin of, of a person, they use the chat base uh, solution. So chat base works in the following way. So you can upload um, some texts, PDFs, uh, or scripts of the video into the chat, chat board. So uh, for example, presenting opinions of this particular person on a certain topics, so on, on the marketing, on the technological side, and so on and so forth. So, and then for example, it comes out with a, with a chat board and which says, hey, don't bother Marlon, please bother me. Ask me anything and I will aim to think and respond like him. So, and it's a very interesting way to double check things. For example, um, we have a uh, marketing event planned with Chinese reseller. They actually had it a couple of days ago. Uh, what do you think we should prepare for that. So then it's, it gives you points from the perspective of co-founder. So you can already basically st uh, can start working on those point points even before he wakes up in the morning. So it's a very, very uh, interesting way of interacting and uh, making things happening faster. So let me then go to the next example. Do you, do you have uh, any comments about digital twins? Have you ever seen uh, such a technology or such a thing in action? Okay. Would you like to have a digital twin for your husband? <laughs> okay, let's go. To the yeah, some example. people are answering as the in the chat as you speak, and they are saying it's very interesting, and they would love to have a. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a very interesting. Uh, a very interesting trend right now for the small startups and companies to be AI first company. First of all, usually using digital twins of each other and to, to ensure instant flow of information. And the second thing is to, uh, to ask AI to do everything from workshops to providing some feedbacks on a, on a sales calls, for example, and so on and so forth. So then let's go uh, to the next example. OK. 
Okay. So then the next example is analyzing uh, sales calls. So how does it work? You basically record every sales call that you or your employee, employees do. And then you can create a script out of this call, put it in PDF, and then work with this script uh, using ChatGPT to get very impressive feedback and very, uh, very much tailored action items on what could be an what was the mood of the meeting. And it, it provides you very concrete and solid feedback. feedback. Uh, then you can ask what in your opinion em employee or sales representative did wrong. And again, you, you get a, a list of potential improvements or proposed solutions. So this is a very, very powerful tool to, to excel every, in every sales call you do. Like for example, in this particular case, it was a real example of the sales call and the main action item at the end, which was highlighted by ChatGPT is, okay, you left the call without any follow-up. Like what was supposed to happen next? And this, is, uh, and this comes out again in minutes, which would be otherwise very difficult or impossible to extract because you wouldn't, you wouldn't watch every sales call <laughs> that, that anyone done. So the next example is, uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, so in this uh, case, oh Jacqueline, where are your examples? <laughs> and they go. No worries. Worst case, I switch over to my side. <laughs> Everything good? I'm I'm working here in parallel. All good. <laughs> wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So, uh, this um, uh, tool. I don't know if you used it or not, but you can absolutely open it now. And this is called perplexity. Could you write to me if you ever heard or used it? It's uh, the website is called perplexity.ai. So, and what is interesting about it, it can query you back. So, for example, I would like to plan vacations with my kids in Asia. So, and then, and then it, it will ask you, a clarifying question. So what, what is the age of your kids? Okay, five to 10, continue. And then it will search multiple, multiple web pages at the same time. So perplexity has an access to the internet. So, and we'll give you a summary and probably ask you more questions and so on and so forth. So it's um, an easy way to create some solutions, for example, if you if you need to plan something real time, like you cannot use ChatGPT or at least without plugins because it has a cutoff date in 2021. Perplexity has an access to internet and has a possibility to query you back to tailor to tailor your your answer to what what you would like to do. So. Yeah, it would be very, very interesting to hear from you if you use perplexity and if you are able to access it right now. So you can obviously use it in many different ways uh, to plan to plan your weekends, to plan your vacations, to, uh, to plan anything that you would like to plan. Of course, uh, we usually... Um, 
uh, use chat GPT for more complex uh, business tasks and using a BART and perplexity and uh, different things for something uh, with uh, a bit lighter agenda. So this, uh, this was perplexity. Let's uh, try to go to the next slide. Okay, so Jacqueline, yes. you're so <laughs> going to take over at this stage with some more use cases. And as Maria already said, please always feel free to interrupt. And looking at the chat, I can uh, see the question, how does it differ, uh, perplexity differ from chat GPT? Uh, only the complexity of the task. So that's a very good question because the first thing I asked myself when I saw perplexity was the same. It, what's the difference? And indeed, what perplexity has is a, um, it's using the API of ChatGPT and it provides you, it is like an enhanced search engine that gives you not only the links where you find information like Google, but it adds a summary on top of it and gives you recommendations for prompting. So that is the enhancement that you can get with perplexity. Hope this was answering uh, the question. Um, yeah, so know your customer. EJ, we allowed ourselves to use you as our guinea pig because what we wanted um, to show you is how important it can be to know uh, to whom you are talking. And one option that you have in ChatGPT is of course the free version that probably a lot of people are using, but there is also paid subscription where you can use so-called plugins. And one of these plugins is VoxScript that is um, querying the web for information. So I'm just going to steal the sharing from, um, I'm going to take it away from you, Maria. Um, and I will show what we have done with your profile. Sorry for the switching back and forward. But what we have done is we asked ChatGPT with this plugin, who is Emmy Alavodi? I hope I spelled it correctly. And then it will go through uh, using this plugin and it will find information about you and give us the link your LinkedIn profile and apparently one page about me on, on the um, women who code um, and other external uh, resources that are available. And then I said, okay, so please now infer values and behavior about this person. And then based on the information and queries, it will give you some information that you're committed to education, empowerment, innovation, and digital transformation. And why is this interesting for me? Because what I can say, for example, let's say because I don't know you, but I have something really important I want to address to you. So I'm saying, please infer the MBTI and based on that, how should I speak to her? Does she want more details or rather high level characteristics? And then, of course, this is a rough estimation, but if I haven't met you before, it's something in my hands, right? And it would tell or it would infer that you are an extroverted person and that you are based on intuition, thinking, and judging. So it calls you the commander because based on MBTI, there is 16 different types of personalities. And it suggests, if I want to speak to you, provide a high-level overview. These people often appreciate getting straight to the point, start with a high-level overview, and then delve into the details. Be direct and honest, and so on and so forth. So this can already help me. When you talk to people that are having a similar classification in MBTI than you have, that's simple. But what if you are planning to talk to, to somebody who has some entirely different character and then you these modifications might help you to get your message across easier. So, and then you can get some information on explaining MBTI and its use, so on and so forth. That was one of the use cases. And then we are back to the slides. 
Another example that I would like to share with you. Yes. So another example that I would like to share with you is a rather recent one because I got an invitation um, for speaking, not at TEDx. I will tell it immediately, but I'm such a big fan of TEDx that what I did, I took it as a reference for my, um, my talk. So the idea is I want to present topics um, that are up to date, but I don't want to repeat the same things over and over again. So I'm using a plugin that is called Voice Script, also ChatGPT paid subscription. And you can just paste the links of YouTube videos. It will go through the transcript and generate the summary for you. So I told it, okay, based on these topics, I was asking for 10 TED Talks that were happening recently and I asked it to create a summary. So this saved me the time of watching 10 of these talks and rather watch it in the order that seems important to me because I can already sneak at the content. That was extremely helpful because it saved me a lot of time to prepare. Also, usually when you are announced as a speaker, they want you to present a summary of yourself and probably a teaser of your, of your talk. And for people who are rather introverts like myself, it feels so awkward to write a summary of yourself. It feels like you are praising yourself, but sometimes we underestimate our achievements, but this is not what you want to do in such a summary. So what I did, I just asked if this person, based on the information that we have seen before, we inferred all these values, behaviors, based on this information, generate a, uh, an introduction as if you would introduce this person for a TED talk or give a summary if this person wants to do this or that. And it was, I was very happy that I got some support on this because naturally it's not in my nature <laughs> to praise myself for, for achievements. Then ongoing, like building up on the information that we had seeing in for values and behavior, I was doing another use case. So. As I've said before, I'm a career changer. So um, with applying for a job at age 38 and not having the um, entire work history in the same industry, as you can imagine, might impose some tricky questions in interviews. So what I did after I got all these values inferred, I said, okay, First, I queried it. So here you can see the prompts on the slide. I said, find out information about the company called, for example, Frequentis. And then find out information about myself, infer my values and beliefs, and where they align with the company. So this is something that you would like to know. Is it, Where do we meet our interests? And then lately, uh, lastly, I asked, so now act. So I asked ChatGPT to act um, as um, a person or to simulate an, an interview where actually myself and a recruiter from Frequentis um, having a talk. And I want, to con um, I want to make them understand what value can I bring. So what would you tell to the recruiter, ChatGPT, if you are Jacqueline? Simulate a conversation between two persons and start with Jacqueline introducing herself. And then I could literally follow how this conversation was going. And in the first run, it was too positive. So I said, okay, now let's have a more skeptical recruiter. Or I could put, okay, now let's put a recruiter that doesn't like to have Jacqueline on board. What could be his key arguments to get her out? And exactly those is the questions that you can prepare yourself mentally and you don't hear it for the first time when you're sitting in the interview. So this was my professional um, use case. And I also have one from, from my family background. So here you see a picture of my eight-year-old son. And he starts to get to an age where he's not playing with these little cute toys anymore, but the online gaming becomes more interesting. So he's totally into Minecraft. And sometimes my son tells me, oh, mom, I was crafting a diamond sword in the nether and then the mobs were coming and this and he's using literally five words in this sentence, which I don't even understand. What are you talking about? But I'm nodding politely and feeling happy. He's happy. <laughs> but still, 
I want to understand why he's so happy, right? But I'm not going to read through all of the documentation online. So um, I asked ChatGPT simply to say, okay, my son loves to play this game. I have no idea. Give me an insight. How is the game working? What's the structure, the characters? So I can get a rough idea. What is he talking about? And also I asked it because my son loves to watch other kids playing these games on YouTube. And I don't want him to see content that is not suited for his age, right? So I, I told him, can you give me um, a matrix, for example, and tell me the most, uh, the, the streamers, what language are they streaming? And how is the educational impact? I'm telling him to infer a score to get an idea about educational impact, use of bad language and popularity, for example. So I get an overview for sure where I don't want him to, to watch the streamers. And something that is not on this slide it was also that I was asking, is there a way other people can talk to my child online in this game? Because that's totally what I'm not interested, but he keeps asking me, he wants to play it in a certain server mode. And what I want is to do this in a safe way. So I also asked ChatGPT, what options are there? What can I do as a parent to, to, to limit the privacy? By the way, I'm super curious, anyone having kids in, uh, in the audience, Maybe if you want, you can raise your hands um, if you have. Okay, um, but I can't see it because I'm sharing. So in any case, I'm handing it over back to you, uh, Maria, because the next use case is for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So as you already understood, we now switched a little bit into a family and free time modus here. So the next thing which we would like to show you is uh, creating your own book with the kids. So there is a wonderful plugin which called Stories, which you can enable on ChatGPT. And um, again provide a lot of context so for example me and um, uh, my two daughters we wanted to create a journey <clears throat> around the globe to explore different way to show kindness so that's what we ask ChatGPT to create and then using this plugin, it creates a small story of Camila and Sofia traveling the world uh, meeting different people and uh, participating in the different stories, making kind actions. And we read it together. For sure, the, the quality of outcome probably yet not as such that I would order the hard copy of this book because there are all these uh, pictures, uh, small bugs that Me Johnny creates. <clears throat> but overall, the story and for reading from your phone, it's really, really beautiful. So we in, really enjoy this type of activity with the kids. Maybe here I will also mention that often we, we do um, a guess game also using ChatGPT. For example, one of our daughters like... Uh, imagine something or the, she she imagined the kitchen table and we tell chat gpt hey now now find out what do i have in my mind and then it asks questions is is it is it round is it square is it in the in the kitchen is it in the lounge so and this type of activity is also quite fun for the kids so maybe i will open now uh, okay, so this is a plugin called Stories, and I think uh, there is also now came out the second one, which does a similar things, which is called Kids Stories. So the next example is... Uh, okay, so the next example is a Christmas meal planning. 
So basically in our family, we have this issue that we have people of different cultural backgrounds. We have, uh, it's not an issue, it's for example, <laughs> of course, it's, it's the big pleasure. But when it comes, comes to agreeing what we cook for the Christmas dinner, it's becoming an issue. So we have a, people of different backgrounds. We have a vegetarians, we have heavy meat eaters. We have uh, people who like to cook. We have people who like to cook less, et cetera, et cetera. So because of all these complications, we end up cooking the exactly same, same food every time on the Christmas Eve. But this year was a bit different. So we spoke into Chad GPT, or Malcolm did. He, he uh, stated all the requirements. He, he said that each one would love to participate and cook one or two dishes please propose recipes so they, then he filtered a bit the recipes or maybe ask to add a new ones then he asked to create to create a shopping list we shopped for everything very quickly and then it came out very very interesting and unusual and uh, everyone were actually very very happy for me, it's one of the very warm and nice examples of using ChatGPT for family. Have you tried to cook with ChatGPT? You can you can tell us in the chat. This is a very nice thing. Uh, maybe here once again, I will mention another possibility that uh, you can also take your phone open chat GPT, come to your fridge and say, okay, I have this and this and this, not so much, but can you propose me two, three recipes, what I can cook with what I have? And you instantly will get a very nice answers and examples of what you can cook. And it's done everything like within a minute. Very interesting application. So then the other thing, which is also very nice, uh, we, <laughs> we travel a lot, we move countries a lot. I think um, me and my husband, we, we moved uh, 10 times within 10 years. Uh, also between countries, we lived in Barcelona, we lived in the UK, now in Austria. So, and obviously we have lots of uh, friends of different backgrounds. So it, when, when it comes up, it comes out with planning of the, one of the kids' birthday, <laughs> it's, it's very difficult to comprehend. So this year, when, when our older daughter was turning seven, I decided to ask ChatGPT to help me to plan her birthday party. Because, first of all, it was supposed to be outside. But what if it rains? So we, we need a backup plan. And then there are going to be kids of uh, different backgrounds. And then we want to sing karaoke of the songs from different languages in different countries. And then we want to have a food with or without pork, and we don't want to cook too much. And also, I don't want to feel like I'm doing everything myself again. <laughs> so I, I asked ChatGPT to consider all this, uh, all these points into the birthday planning. And by the way, our daughter likes uh, Ladybug cartoon and that other cartoon. So let's let's propose some games which would which would uh, involve these characters of these cartoons. So and basically, it's uh, it was was a great success at the end so it distributed tasks it made shopping lists it proposed some small uh, recipes it proposed some songs which we uploaded to our karaoke mic so everything went super well and once again a huge time saver and two huge nerve saver as well so the next example here is basically our daughter using uh, Bard, so it's uh, Google AI chat uh, herself. So I just opened Bard on my phone. 
So maybe you can also try to do it right now because at least uh, what would be nice after the session, if um, whoever not used or touched a certain AI tool yet would, would, would do it. So I go to Bard AI on my phone. So, and then it's very easy. So as always, I switch on the voice entry and then, uh, and then Camila speaks to Bart. So in this particular example, uh, she provides context. She says, I'm Camila, I'm seven years old and all my friends in the class, or maybe not all or some of them play an instrument. So I'm, I'm also thinking of joining music classes uh, this year, but I would like to, to play an instrument which I can take home or maybe which I don't need to practice so much because I don't have so much patience, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then it gives, a, gives quite an overview which she can also listen to. So she can listen the answers because maybe she doesn't read particularly well yet in English. So she can listen to the answers. And actually, uh, at least once a day, kids are asking, oh, can I ask Bart something? So I just give them my phone and they do the rest themselves. So they, they voice entry and they listen to the answer. Uh, so um, other things as well, they frequently ask like, who is the big, uh, tallest man in the world? Who is the strongest man? And those, all those uh, questions that you have no idea how to answer. Uh -huh. So then the next one. Uh, then uh, we also, of course, use BARD for like weekend plannings and so on, because BARD is connected to the internet. And once again, you can provide lots of content. For example, last weekend, we were going to Zurich for half a day. It was raining. We were not sure how to spend this two, three hours there. And it found some places or events including this wonderful chocolate uh, fabric, which we ended up visiting. So this is quite interesting. And you don't get the same thing in the same time, just Googling it. So, and then the last maybe part, which, uh, or last example we came to, is uh, using... Uh, being AI. That's what I would like you also to open now to go to Microsoft Bing because there is actually a very uh, interesting functionality right now there. Let me let me know if you if you manage to open it. It might help to use different browsers with Bing because I'm using Firefox and have pretty strict security settings. Yeah. And um, it doesn't allow me or it tells me I'm too strict for this, but um, I can do it, for example, uh, in Chrome. Apparently, I don't have all the ad blockers and stuff, and then you can use it in Chrome. Yes, exactly. Same thing was with me, but I ended up using it on my phone. So what's interesting about Bing, now you can upload the picture over there and ask Bing to describe it. Like, for example, last uh, or previous weekend, I was doing some mountaineering with a local alpine group. We climbed one mountain, so and I uploaded the photo of myself on the, on the top of the mountain. So and I asked Bing, "Can you describe the picture?" So it says, "Okay, there are like four people here on the slide." Is a bit different example, but um, this is very useful for those who needs to generate content, who likes Instagramming or other platforms, or even LinkedIn. Etc. So first of all, you can ask to describe the picture. So you get a very beautiful description. And the next 
Uh, next thing you can ask, you can say, okay, now using the description of the picture and the fact that it was, uh, I don't know, Silvretta Mountain in Vorarlberg in Austria, and we climbed it on a wonderful Saturday afternoon, can you write me an Instagram post based on all this information? And then it, it writes a really interesting post like, oh, and a bright day for brave men <laughs> or something like that, doesn't matter. So, and it can maybe if you don't like the tone as always with the eye, you can ask to use more casual, casual language or more uptight language or positive, etc., etc. So actually, and then you can obviously correct it a little bit to make it more yours, but it's also very much time saving. Or oh, especially it's useful to write, for example, blog post about, I don't know, marketing campaigns or visiting the customer, especially for those who are involved in startups or, or personal projects. It's also a big help. So then Jacqueline. Yeah, but probably... Maria, let me add something to this example, yes. please, because we we... I think we sometimes underestimate the power of, of posting and sharing things because we often think, why would anybody care anyway? But like this workshop, for example, is, is doing so much good and is spreading so much information <laughs> to the right people. And by you just putting a general post in your Instagram, on your LinkedIn, someone for sure is going to see this who wasn't aware of it. And that's how it, it spreads. But people don't always feel confident doing this post, but it does something good for the community. So this can help you a little bit also uh, on the on the professional side to get, first of all, visibility online and also to, to spread the news to those who really would benefit from it. Sorry, Maria, for the interruption. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so I actually realized that we missed a very important part. I don't know, it got lost in our slides, but I will show it right now. Um, it's uh, it's plugging and also the website, which is called, there is an AI for that. So you can use it in a paid version of chat GPT and it's plugging. It's, it's, there is an AI for that plugging. For example, we had a task or oh, we wanted to start generating podcasts. And when you think about it, it sounds very complicated and you need to look for some for some um, <clears throat> platforms or maybe even for seek professional help and understand. And so, but when you go to ChatGPT, enable this, uh, this plugin and ask, uh, which app exists that can help me to record, podcast, cut it, remove silences and post it. So, and then it comes out with a list of the solution where the first one is a podcast though, is an amazing way to, to create podcasts. It turned out and we already used it. So, and a part of being a chat GPT plugin, uh, there is a website which is called, there is an AI for that. Because we know like nowadays is crazy. This presentation to uh, <laughs> in one week or maybe even sooner than that will become obsolete because there will be new things, there will be new solutions or new limitations or something like that. But uh, using this website, you can find, uh, find uh, AIs that suit you, your current tasks or current challenges. I want to create a video. I want to I want to make podcasts. I want to make uh, TikTok videos, et cetera, et cetera. For sure that already exists on this website and listed there. So this is quite a useful link to have. I'm going to copy it also in our chat. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we are going to maybe go to our last slide. And I would like to invite Jacqueline to start <laughs> sharing our uh, view and then I'll join as well. Yes. So 
we've presented you now a couple of use cases and it was probably a ton of information and many different things but very happily we have a recording you can rewatch it try it out come back it's always a trade off a little bit what do we show what is important and everything feels important somehow um but if there's anything that you remember from today really is that this revolution this ai revolution is taking place and we cannot afford to look away because as women it is so important to to be part of shaping the future we don't want somebody else to take decisions about the signs of that we are going to use that our kids are going to use we want to be part of it and we know especially women have so many things so many side hustles and stuff to do that as you can see on this picture sometimes you start to lose the focus for when somebody wants to give you a tool tool to improve especially if it's not a plug and play you have to play around you have to get some exposure get your hands dirty because it's really going to save you time and it will help you advance in your career yes so this is what we really would like you to take home and at the very end um, you can do us a favor by giving us feedback because feedback is the breakfast of the champions right so we also like to develop and improve ourselves um maria could you share probably the next slide or i'm anyway going to copy into yeah so there is the qr code for you to give us feedback and in the chat i put the link because i'm going to share with you the results of what you are giving us as a feedback in real time and there is two questions that we would love you to answer so the first question is that we would love to know how useful this workshop was for you is it not at all um, a little okay neutral quite useful or very useful so because at the end of the day, no feedback means no improvement, right? So please be here fully honest and transparent and also feel free to let us know um, what you were missing, what you would like have done different. This is um, all to the benefit for the next listeners because no workshop is entirely like the same like the, the upcoming one. Okay, cool. So I see I see responses coming in. That's um, very nice. Cool. Okay, so at, at, we have seven responses from the 17 participants, but in general, we can see a trend. At least nobody took didn't take anything home and also not a little. So that is really what we were aiming for. Um, the next one, and I hope this works automatically now for you, is if you would give us three words, how you would describe the workshop, and then we can build a very nice word cloud um, to, to visualize your experience with us. Ich bin noch nicht fertig mit Hause. Jetzt ist es ganz schlecht. Wow. <laughs> Interruption from my side. <laughs> it makes a beautiful picture out of the words. Yes. And that's what I was also uh, thinking to say at, at the end of the presentation because we really really want generative ai to be trained on a female perspective to also be attuned to our goals to our desires to our wishes to improve certain things to our wishes to i don't know <laughs> to for for AI to be women like kind and 
helpful mm -hmm. and useful. And it's it would be a big shame if it will learn, I don't know, from the internet or from pr primarily male perspective. And then the things that will be used be used in the future can be very different from from what we would like. So therefore, we we see it as our mission to spread the word around and to empower and uh, motivate women to to use this technology, in order for this technology in the future to to bring us a better future. Feel free to try out. I think the meeting still goes until half past. And we will stay here. If questions pop up, feel free to ask questions um, share your screen or put it in the chat. We are here um, if you encounter issues. Um, yeah. And giving it back to EJ. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Very well. Thank you so much. This was very insightful, enlightening wonderful, remarkable, and I could go on and on, but then we've already had the word map that had described everything. I also want to thank our participants, especially for staying up to this time. I know that time is money. AI is the future, and that's why you'd, and AI is the present. It is the future, it is the present. So I know that that's why you carved out time to attend this workshop. We appreciate you. If you have questions, please put it in the chat. We have um, our upcoming event. It's called the imposter syndrome puzzle, understanding and overcoming its grip. It's taking place on the 27th of September at 6 p.m., same time. That's the next event that the Barcelona Network of Women Who Code would host. And it is a virtual event. Imposter syndrome comes in many forms, not just self-doubt. Imposter syndrome can affect anyone of any gender at any age and stage of their careers. It has been identified as a key symptom during perimenopause you leave the inspiring session with an understanding of your own imposter, what type of imposter you are, and a toolkit to help you love your imposter as a friend, not a foe. The interactive session will be led by CTCV CEO and founder, Victoria. She's passionate about diversity, equality and inclusion and Victoria is an international keynote speaker at female focus events. So we'd like to welcome you very specially to our next event and we encourage you to stay connected, become a member of Women Who Code, find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. You can write us if you please. We are waiting for your answers. If you still, I mean, beg your pardon, we're waiting for your questions. If you have questions, you can always reach us. We have put our LinkedIn, um, did you put your LinkedIn profile in the chat? Yeah, at the very beginning. <laughs> okay, okay, that's nice. So I'm also on LinkedIn, you can fish me out. We want to thank you very much for today. Thank you so much. And basically, that's it. Have a very wonderful night or enjoy the rest of your day, depending on what part of the world you joined us from. God bless you. Thank you. And Maria, we thank you. Jacqueline, thank you so much. We appreciate you. You made our day. 